Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Uh, it's important for us to understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it's important for us to be able to hear, right? Amen? We want to hear what God's saying. We want to hear what his voice this morning. We want to hear his direction in our life. We're, we're excited. This is the third uh, part three of our series, Direction. Um, and I'm really excited about what God is doing um, uh, in, in this series. He's, what he's doing in me, what he's doing in others. And uh, I'm really excited about that. Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you weren't here before and you, or you missed a, a part of the series, we encourage you to go, go on YouTube and look us up at mybreakthrough.online on YouTube, and you can uh, go back and review every single message that we've ever done. I think we have a uh, hundred and thirty some uh, videos up there. Uh, so any any teaching that we've ever done is all online. So you can go get it uh, and, and review it. I I uh, I, I have some people that uh, always tell me, you know, I'm really excited at, the, at in service and I take notes, but I always go home and I review everything and I get so much more out of it. And it's important that we, we do that. I don't know, maybe you're not like me, but, but I'm not that smart. So I have to review and review and review and keep putting into me so that something good can start to come out of me. Amen? So let's look at John 21, verses 3, 4, and 5 this morning. And uh, let's just read together. So if you're ready... We'll read together on the count of three. Ready? One, two. I'm going to be reading from King James Version. <laughs> I don't know what version you have. And really, it's not that important to me what version you have. Uh, I read from the real Word of God. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but I, I'm going to read out loud. So if you have another version, if it's in Spanish or Japanese or Chinese or whatever it is, uh, that you know, some of you guys talk some language. I don't understand what you're saying anyways. And, uh, but it doesn't matter. It's not important. It's just important that you read so you can hear. Amen? Not, not just in your head, too. I want you to read out. Come on, get it out. <laughs> that's how you're going to hear it. You're going you're to read it, but you're also going to hear it. So that's important. Here we go. Ready? John 21, verse 3, 4, and 5. Just three verses. And here we go. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. And they said unto him, We also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that, and that night they caught nothing. And when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have you any meat? And they answered him, No. Let me just pray. Lord, I pray right now that you would touch our hearts, our minds, God, our ears, our eyes. God, that we might see, hear, know, and understand something new from the word of God today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen? Amen. God is good. I'm really excited this morning, and uh, I, I have a lot to talk about. I'm going to try not to keep you too, too much past 1 o'clock. Um, <laughs> I'll talk for a little while this morning, and uh, I'd like to welcome every, all of our, our new visitors and guests. We're, we're happy to see you. We'd love to meet you, hug your neck later. Uh, uh, if, uh, if you don't know this, uh, uh, someone should have gave you a, a journal this morning. Uh, we encourage you to take notes and to write down anything that God is saying to you so that you can take it with you, amen? And then review uh, later what, what God has spoke to you. And so we're excited about that. And, uh, you know, we've prayed over the journals. We prayed over the, 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 that God would just begin to flow through uh, whatever word is spoken because it's not my words that are going to change your life. I can, I can speak and talk a lot. That's what all, all I do. I'm good at talking. Uh, but, but it's not my words that are going to change you. It's the word of God. Amen. It's the, it's the meat that we're going to receive this morning from the word of God. And let me just jump right in this morning uh, to give you the first word. The word is uh, fishing, fishing. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this direction is east, okay? We're talking about east this morning a little bit. And uh, so uh, I, I, like, I like this verse uh, because Simon Peter says, I go fishing, I go fishing. And uh, I can just imagine if, if we were here and have a conversation with Peter, Peter would say, you know, that's just, that's what I do. I'm a fisherman. You know, that's what he did. When Jesus found him, he found him uh, fishing. He found him fishing and he said to him, follow me. And I, I wonder sometimes how often is it that, uh, that, that you know, I, I don't know, it, I made my life's different than yours, but when I was young, very young, uh, maybe around 10 or so, 9, 10, 10 years old, is when I found the Lord, or I say I found the Lord, but it's when he found me. And I, I remember the day because I, 
Uh, we talked about it on Friday a little bit, but I remember the day because I got on my knees and I remember feeling this huge burden lift off of me. It's like, here, how can a nine-year-old or a 10-year-old boy have so much weight on him, you know, when you think about that. But I, I had this weight on me and I, I just had this realization that I was a sinner and I needed a Savior and there was nobody else that was going to uh, uh, take my sin from me but Jesus Christ. And I, I found him when I was very young. And I, I would like to say that I lived happily ever after and I never made another mistake in my whole life. But I'm going to tell you that I have made many, many mistakes since that moment. But I'm going to tell you, I always keep coming back to this very, very big truth. Jesus loves me. This I know. You know, and it's amazing grace that he has in my life. It's, a, it's an amazing amount of mercy that he's had in my life. And I don't, I don't know, maybe you guys don't need uh, grace or mercy, but uh, I, I need it. Amen? I need it. But Peter said, yeah, uh, Peter said, this is what I do. I just go, I'm going to go fishing. That's what I do. Peter was probably very good at fishing. And you know why, why I know that? Because, because Peter had people, people said, I'll go with you, because they probably wanted to watch Peter uh, fish. He was like a pro fisher back then. I don't know, maybe he had all of the sponsors and all that from, from back in the day, you know, and I don't know what, uh, who would have sponsored him, but he was a professional fisherman, and so when he was going to go fishing, someone wanted to go and watch him, you know. They wanted to go watch him fish, and I, I don't know, maybe you don't like fishing. Maybe you, it would be uh, today's... Uh, uh, would be like a, a basketball player, a famous basketball player is going to go shoot some hoops. Would you go with him? And uh, people, people would probably go with. <laughs> and then some, some, I think sometimes we're guilty of believing that, 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 that we believe this lie. This, it's, 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 I grew up that way, and that's the way it's always going to be. I, I, I'm a, my, I, I started out dumb, I'm going to end up dumb, okay? You know, I, I started up uh, uh, rich, I'll just end up rich. You know, somebody, I'm always going to be that way. And, and in our life, uh, we, we're guilty a lot of times of saying this thing or even believing it that it'll never change. It's just never going to change because that's just who I am. That's just what I do, you know? And, uh, and we, get, we, get, uh, we get so locked in. Uh, 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 in, in, in a mindset or a stronghold of, of life patterns that uh, it seems, it seems like never, nothing ever changed. I don't know, maybe no, I'm not talking to anybody here, but maybe nobody's ever been angry. Anybody ever been angry? <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I was angry, and I remember, I remember a time and a moment, I can, I can take you right back to the moment when God delivered me of anger, okay? It's not that anger is a bad thing, anger is a good thing, but I'm going to tell you, anger, if, you, if, you, if it's left unchecked, uh, out, of, out of step, it will, it will destroy your life, it will destroy your relationships, it will destroy everything, because you always got to filter everything you go through in life through that anger in your life. And there's no other filter, but I'm going to tell you, the filter that we should be using is Jesus Christ. It's the Word of God, amen? I'm going to grow in my relationship with Him, and I'm going to filter every decision, every choice, every circumstance through the Word of God, and I'm going to find out the answer, because Jesus is the answer for the world today, amen? Above Him there is no other. Jesus is the way. You know, it's a song, but I'm going to tell you it's the truth. It's based on a truth, amen? It's based on the Word of God. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe this is not you, but I used to look in the mirror and I didn't like what I saw when I looked in the mirror. I look in the mirror and I go, you know, you're just worthless. You're really dumb. You're not that cute. You know, you're kind of fat. You're kind of this, you're kind of that. And I had all these lists. It's a long list of things that I thought I was, okay? But I'm going to tell you that I, I had to go through the list, okay, and find out what, what is it that God did wrong when he made me, you know, because I had to figure out what, what was going on in my life that made me think this way, and why did I think like that, and why, why was I feeling that way, and why was, why was all of this going on in my life, and I was like, ah, I need help, God, I need help. <laughs> you know, some of us need help, and we, gotta, uh, we go places and we lay down, but I'm going to tell you, you need to go places where you kneel down and find a relationship with Jesus Christ. Find the answer, because he is the answer, amen? He is the answer. <sighs> Let me just give you something. Is it possible this morning that what you see when you look in the mirror is different than what Jesus sees this morning? Is it just possible? I want to I just ask, is it possible? Is it just possible, maybe, that what you see and what he sees is two different things? Because I'm going to tell you, it just may be possible. I, I just want to give that to you right there for a moment. Okay? <laughs> Amen? Amen. So, so I, want to read, I want to read a couple of verses. Um, Matthew 4, 
19, uh, 16 through 19, and I'm going to read backwards today, okay? I'm going to read from verse 19 up to 16, if that's okay with you. Um, <laughs> are you ready? You don't have to go there if you don't want to. I'll read for you, and uh, I'll make it real easy for you. But Matthew 4, 16 through 19, and it says in verse 19, And he saith unto them, Jesus says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. He's talking to Peter and his brother, and then he goes, he goes, and then Jesus was walking by the Sea of Galilee and saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net, for they were fishers. Remember, Jesus, Peter was a fisherman. <laughs> Jesus found him fishing, and he said, follow me. So then, then let's go up to verse 17, and, and, at, and at, from that time Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's interesting that Jesus said, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, before he saw Peter, before he said to them, follow me. It's, it's important to understand it. And then, and then and we go up to verse 16, and the people which sat in darkness saw a great light. <laughs> I, I remember this song when I was growing up, uh, going up in church, and it said, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Whoa, this little light of mine. Yeah, come on. I'm going to let it shine and let it shine. Let it shine all the time. Come on. Don't hide it under a bushel. Don't, don't, don't let the devil blow it out. I'm going to let it shine. Don't, you know, because the light, who's the light? Jesus was the light. He came preaching repent, right? And then he found people, and he found you, and he found me, and he found Peter, and he found Andrew. And then he said, follow me, and I will make you something that you are not right now. Amen? So that's the, that's the process. See, the process is uh, he's the light. And we're, we're the ones that follow the light. And he comes into my heart and life, and he changes me, and I become a different person. Amen? I become a different person. It says, turn to your neighbor and, say, and look him straight in the eye and tell him, you're different. <laughs> Try not to laugh at him, okay? <laughs> I'm going to look at my wife. You're different. No. <laughs> so, 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 but he said, follow me. But it's important to, to note that, that we have to see the light, though, right? We have to see the light before we can follow the light. we got to see Jesus this morning because we can't follow someone we don't know. Amen? Because, I mean, I don't know, sometimes, uh, sometimes we follow people that we don't know, like when we're driving a car, but if you don't know the person, you don't really know where they're going. You don't even know if they know where they're going. See, I want to go, I want to follow somebody who knows where, where they're going. More importantly, I want to follow somebody that knows who I am and who I'm supposed to be. Isn't it great that we got a friend in Jesus that even though we don't know where we're going, Come on, we really don't know where we're going. He does. He knows where we're going. And he, and he created me to be somebody, uh, somebody special in some moment, somewhere down the road. He created me for something greater than what I am right now, amen? And I need to follow him, and I need to know him, though. It's more importantly, I need to know him. I need to see the light this morning, amen? I need to see the light. <laughs> People, we need a people that sees the light this morning. That's what we need. We need to be a people that is looking for the light, amen? Looking for Jesus this morning. Right? You know, the last time I checked, uh, <laughs> there's only one sun. Did you notice, notice Jesus was walking and people saw the light? They weren't talking about the sun. They weren't talking about a natural light. They were talking about a spiritual light. Something has to happen in me spiritually. Amen? It's not a natural thing I'm looking for. I'm not looking for a natural thing. I'm looking for, for a spiritual uh, awakening in my life. Right? The light that, that, that Peter saw is the same light that we see, amen? It's not two, different, two separate Jesuses, okay? Not two, not two separate ways. There is only one way, amen? His name is Jesus. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, amen? <laughs> I saw the light, I saw the light, no more in darkness, no more in night. I am so happy, no sorrow inside. I can't get the song out of my head. Inside, praise the Lord. I saw the light. See, we can rejoice this morning, amen, that we saw the light, amen. We saw Jesus Christ. I saw him, amen, and he's come into my life. He's changed me, amen. I'm different because he's with me, amen. Woo. Let me give you the next word, with. I got to move quick with. It's interesting that Peter went fishing and others came with. Isn't it, isn't it powerful to think about that? Who's watching you? Who's, who's going with you? See, because see, we don't really think about that much uh, when, we're, when we're in the middle of a situation. We don't think about who's watching me. 
We don't think about who's listening to me. We don't think about who's, who's wondering uh, where I'm going, who's, who's looking to see what's going to happen in my life. We don't think about that. But I'm going to tell you, somebody is going with you this morning. It might be your sister. It might be your brother. It might be your mom. It might be your dad. It might be your friends at work. It might be, it might be whoever it is. But I'm going to tell you, somebody is going with you. And a matter of fact, you, my friends, <laughs> are, are able to change environments and situations and families and circumstances just by being in there, being there. We are the thermostat. We are not. We're the thermostat that sets the temperature in the room. Amen? When we walk into the room, Jesus is with me. The light is with me. And, and somebody can see that light that never saw it before. Those that are in darkness can see the light. Amen? Because it's in you. It's in you. It's in you. It's in you. It's in every one of us. Amen? we got to understand that somebody is watching me. Peter was doing what Peter always did. That's what he did. He went fishing. He went back to fishing. This is after Jesus had died. Jesus, this was after Jesus was crucified. This was after Peter had betrayed Christ. He went back doing what he always did. Peter was doing what he did. He was a fisherman. He's a fisherman. That's what he was good at. He was good at being a Christian. He, he was just learning how to be a Christian. He didn't know. He didn't know. He didn't understand. He had spent a lot of time with Jesus, all his three and a half years or whatever. He had spent all that time with Jesus and still went back to doing what he always did. How many times are we guilty of going back? How many times? I'm going to tell you, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. <laughs> Let's go see what Peter's going to catch today, right? Let's go see what he's going get, to get today. But, but I, I understand this morning Psalms 23. It says... The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I, I understand that, that I, I need a shepherd. I need a leader in my life. I need somebody to lead me to a different place. Otherwise, I'm going to end up back where I was. That's what happens to us. If we don't follow Jesus, we're going to go right back to what we're good at. Amen? If you were a liar before Jesus, you're going to be a good liar after Jesus. If you're, if Jesus isn't, if you're not following Jesus, you're going to end up doing whatever it is you were doing. And you're going to, you're going to be good at it. Amen? Because that's what you're good at, right? Okay, okay. There's got to come a day. Maybe it's today that we got to come to a place where we're willing to say, "Okay, Jesus. Okay, okay. I'm gonna follow you this morning. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a line in the stand. This is the day. This is it. I'm gonna follow you. I don't care who's watching me. I'm willing to walk in your footsteps. Isn't it crazy that the, Jesus is our shepherd and we can follow him? In other words, when when he walks, all I got to do is, is is go like this. Okay, okay. Uh, it's going to next. But see, well, we get, we, get, we get confused because I, I want to see way out what's over there. And Jesus is saying, just, just take another step. Just take another step. Just take another step. And pretty soon you're going to find yourself right where you're supposed to be, amen? And it may not look like what you think it's supposed to look like. I'm going to tell you, because we got to understand there has to be a shift in our identity, okay? There must be a, a, a change and what I used to like, I can't like it anymore because, but I'm not just going to say, oh, I'm not going to like it anymore. I'm going to tell you something has to change from the inside out. i got to become new inside before I become new outside. I cannot just change. I can't make my mind up, oh, I'm going to do it different. I'm going to do it better because you're going to mess it up. But if Jesus comes into my heart and changes who I am, I will become who he created me to be all along. And I will be, I will be loved. See, that's the key. He loves you. But are you being loved? You're a human being something. But are you being loved this morning? That's the key. That's the key. John 10, verse 27. My very first, very, very favorite scripture because I think it typifies our walk with Christ. John 10, verse 27 says, My sheep and I no, and we follow. I have to hear. His responsibility is to know me. I don't have to do that. He, he knows me already anyways. And then all I have to do is take a step. Just take a step, follow me. Jesus said, get up and go to church this morning. And some of us didn't want to get up. I know, I, know, I was like, I don't know. I, I joined, said, I said, I don't want to go to church today. She said, you got to go, you're the pastor. So I got up and went. But, but maybe I don't want to. Maybe I don't want to study all the time. 
But you know what? I have to if I'm going to follow Jesus because he created me to be who I am this morning. He created me to be standing up here this morning. This is who I'm supposed to be this morning because he planned for me to be here. Hmm. <laughs> Did you ever notice, maybe you don't have this problem, but even if your life is a train wreck, if your life is a train wreck, you're still reluctant, reluctant to let go of it because it's my life. You know, that's what it is. It's, it's a train wreck, but I don't want to leave it because this is my life. I'm stuck. I got this. I got that. I got this. And we try to hold it all together. But he wants to know you this morning. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> Are we the kind of people that needs a sign? See, that's what, that's what we do. We go, God, just give me a sign that's you. Let me know it's you. Let me know it's you. Let's, let me know it's you. And he's saying, follow me. Follow me. See, we're supposed to be a people of faith. People of faith, believers, believe before they see. They believe what they have heard. They believe the word of God. They know that he's in me. In me. I know he's in me. I may not see it out here yet, but I know he's in me. Let me give you another word. Morning. Did you know the sun rises in the east this morning? The sun rises in the east. And <laughs> we need to be looking for the morning. I mean, like, believing for the morning. Like, like, I think there's a lot of Christians, a lot of people that are in circumstances or situations and they, they, don't, they, 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 don't, they, they stop looking here and they start looking at what can, what's going to happen 20 years from now. <laughs> Where am I going to be 20 years from now? And they forget to understand that in the moment is when Jesus is going to do the greatest miracle in your life. It's in the moments, in the moments, in the moments, in the moment. Matter of fact, he's trying to do something in our lives all the time, every day, every single time. That's something that we don't like happens in our life because sometimes it's just an opportunity for you to begin to see and, uh, what, what it is that God is trying to do in your life. He's trying to do something through you and, and it always doesn't look, look good, all right? And we remember, when I say the word morning, I always remember this, this psalm, uh, Psalms 30, verse 5. It says, his anger endures for a moment. Uh, in his favor is life. But, and then we, we know this part. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Uh, weeping may endure for the night. And, and it's, I, I'm 50, almost 52 years old, okay? And so I've cried a lot. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I've cried a lot, you know, because I don't, I, I, there's just a lot of injustice in my life. I mean, people cut me off when I'm driving. I've been flipped off by people. I've had people uh, uh, yell and scream at me. I've had people stand right in my face and poke me in the chest. Uh, I, I've had people uh, punch me before. I've had circumstances and situations that just aren't right in my life. And I'm going to tell you that, that I have to be willing to give all of that up and understand that that. Joy is coming in the morning. Joy is coming in the morning. Joy is in me. See, because the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, joy, peace. Come on. And I'm telling you, those things don't, don't just happen in your life. You just don't make them in your life. They just, it, it's a process of time. that It's, it's about getting planted in and letting the, the, the Word of God begin to grow up in me. And I, that's just fruit that comes out of me. And, and, and in the fruit, <laughs> trees never eat their own fruit. The, 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 the fruit is for somebody else to come and pick off of me. And, and I, I forget about that because I'm too concerned about how I feel. I'm not, I'm, I'm not concerned about how you feel, and I should be concerned about how you feel because that's the heart of Christ this morning. It's for, it's for you, it's for you, it's for you, it's for others, it's for somebody else. And we get so confused as a Christian because we think it's all about me. And I'm going to tell you, if, if you think it's all about you, you will go through many, many dark nights and many, many tears, and nothing will ever change because you're always thinking about yourself. Joy comes in the morning. When I lift my eyes off of where I am and I see Jesus, he is the light of the world. Okay? That's what the difference is. I must lift my eyes this morning from where I am and know that he is the one. He's my help. I come. Say amen. I lift my eyes to the hills. From whence cometh my help? That's what's so powerful about worship. Worship is all about that. It's about taking my eyes off of me and putting them on him where they belong. Amen? Amen. 
John 21, verse 4, we just read that at the beginning. It said, but when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but his disciples didn't even know it was him. (laughs) Jesus was standing there, and they didn't even recognize him. And I wonder, are we guilty of the same thing? Walking through life, not recognizing Jesus is doing something. Jesus is right here with me all the time. And I don't, I don't even see him because I'm too focused on this. I, I got to go back to one of my favorite verses. I have a lot of favorite verses, but from my private stack, okay? This is from my stash that I keep. That's just mine. Colossians 3, right? And verse 1 through 4, and I know it by heart. It says, if ye then be risen. I, I can preach a whole message on if ye then be. If ye then be, and I'm not going to have time to preach that to you this morning, but if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your, verse 2, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. <laughs> set your affection on things above, not down here. For ye are dead. Oh my goodness. Did I just say that? Yeah, I said you're dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. In other words, something died. The old man died. He passed away. (laughs) Something new had to happen. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, behold. That means I behold. I behold the whole world beholds it. Something new has happened in me. Amen? (laughs) If he then... But but then verse 4. When, you, when Christ, who is your life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear in glory. You will appear in glory. There's going to be an appearance made, amen? I'm going to appear in glory. There's going to be a day, and I'm going to tell you, there might be a day, and it might be sooner than we think, but we will appear in glory. But I'm going to tell you, wouldn't it be awesome if, if today was the day you could appear, he could appear in your circumstance and in your glory, just in your attitude, in who you look at in the mirror? Wouldn't it be awesome to know that, that, that he can appear today, right now, in this moment? Maybe he's already standing in front of you. I preached a message once. The tagline was, what are you looking at but not seeing? Or what are you seeing and not looking at? Because that's what happens. We're so quick to go through and to go on and get beyond. But it's the moment. It's the moments that matter. That's where Jesus is right now, amen? (laughs) We're a people of faith. Why are we so afraid of the dark? I know where my help comes from. It's from the Lord. Joshua 3, verse 15. I don't want to read the verse. I just want to read the parentheses. And they were getting ready to cross over into the promised land. Next week is about the promised land. This week is about where I came from. And and my tendency to go back. That's what it is. It's where I came from, but why do I always want to go back? And in the parentheses it says, For the Jordan overfloweth all his banks all the time of the harvest. I, the parentheses, I have always struggled with that little piece, but I, I understand this. If God is about to do something great, and he is, why is it that there seems to be more obstacles <laughs> in your way? Why does the river have to overflow? But see, it says, it answers the question. It says, it says all the time of the harvest, the river overflows. All the time of the harvest, it overflows. Because, because it's harvest time. See, it's, it's, time, it's time for harvest. But see, harvest time doesn't mean I, I work on me. It doesn't, I'm not working on me anymore. I've, I've, I've had a breakthrough. See, I'm not working on me anymore. I'm not working on, on, on collecting other, other souls. Other, 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 I'm, I'm going to go out and harvest, okay? I'm going to bring in some souls for the kingdom of God to, be, to grow, amen? That's what, that's what harvest time is about. Harvest time's not about me. It's about getting someone else, Amen? And see, we got our focus on us. What's in it for me? Instead of, let's go get somebody else. See, that's the problem that we have. That's the problem we have. Christians have. We need to be following the leader. His name is Jesus. You know, Joshua is another name for Jesus. Did you know that? It's another name for Jesus. And he's, he's the leader that takes us into the promised land. 
He's the leader that takes us into the promised land. There's going to be obstacles like water, wet feet, Jericho, some big walled city that we're going to have to tear down. But it's harvest time. Let's set aside the fear, the fear of darkness. Set aside the fear of darkness this morning. Amen? So we can inherit the promise. Amen? Children. Let me give you another word, children. I'm almost done. I promise not to keep you another 15 more minutes or so. Jesus said, children, have you any meat? They didn't even recognize him. Jesus wasn't even hurt by the fact or discouraged by the fact that Peter had denied him three times, that Peter had left him, that Peter was the leader. He was one of the leaders, you know, one of the, the key men. There was three of them that always went with Jesus. He were like right with him, and he would go places with him. And Jesus was, hey, hey, you guys stay here, but come on, Peter, James, John, let's go. Let's go up on the mountain. And Jesus was transfigured. I mean, he showed him his glory, and he showed him, he showed him uh, the healing, and he showed him... <laughs> Peter opened his mouth one time and, and, and they said, does, does, does your master pay taxes? And he's like, uh, uh, and he sends him out fishing and he gets a fish and out of the fish comes some, some, some coins for the provision, for the need that was there. <laughs> Peter had saw all that thing, all those things, but yet he still went fishing. He still went fishing. But Jesus wasn't discouraged. Jesus went out there <laughs> and looking for Peter. He went looking. For, Jesus is looking for you this morning. He's looking for me this morning. He hasn't forgotten you. He's not discouraged. He's not upset. He still loves you. He wants you. Amen. He wants you. He said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Come on. He said, he said I'm not going to leave you alone. Turn to your neighbor and just tell him, you are not alone. You are not alone. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. He, he hasn't forgotten you. Amen. Uh, uh, Hebrews 13, 5 says that he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Right? And then, and then, uh, but Jesus says to him, he says, do you have any meat? <laughs> it seems like Jesus is, all, is concerned about their, their physical well-being, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem that way? He's like, you guys have been up all night. You've you got to be hungry. Are you, do you have any meat? Did you catch anything? <laughs> See, isn't it also weird <laughs> that Peter, they didn't, even, they, didn't even, they didn't even think that, well, that's Jesus. They didn't think about that at all. They never even concerned themselves. Matter of fact, I wonder if that's the case we have here today, too. Uh, I got to go on a rabbit trail for you. Can I go on a rabbit trail? I, I don't want to, but I, I, I have to. <laughs> Isaiah 55, it's going to be, it's going to seem like a rabbit trail. I'll bring it back around, I promise. Isaiah 55, 8 through 11, says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Tell, tell, tell your neighbor, you're not thinking right. You're way off. Because <laughs> you're way off. I understand this. God is God, and I'm not God. Isn't it powerful? I can, I can look at myself in the mirror. Sometimes I have to do this. I don't know, maybe I'm just dumb and stupid, but I literally have to look in the mirror and tell myself, you are not God. You don't have to understand everything. You don't have to feel him this morning. You just have to know that he is God. Amen? And whatever he says is okay with me. Even if I don't like how it feels, it's okay. It's okay because... His thoughts are not my, what I'm thinking. His ways are not my ways. Amen? And I am a Christian this morning, and I'm going to follow him even if I don't like it. I'm going to go there. Amen? Because I know that's the way I have to go for him to make whatever it is he's making out of me. Amen? Amen? Okay. I understand God is God. Listen to this, verse 10. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven, <laughs> as the rain comes down, how does the rain fall? It might look like buckets of rain, but I'm going to tell you it's a drop. It's just a drop. It's just a drop, 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 drop. 
and a snowflake. How does a snowflake fall? Isn't that powerful? Snowflakes. Not a single snowflake ever looks the same. And you know, snowflake has got a really bad connotation nowadays, but I'm going to tell you, it, not, none of them are the same. They're all different, but they all fall float, flake at a time. Flake at a time. See, see, being a Christian looks like this. Okay, If I had a cup, I don't have a cup. Somebody's got a cup. If we had a cup, okay, and, I, and, I, and, and, the, and the word of God was coming, coming out this morning, and, and I don't have a cup. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Look, just, just pretend I have a cup. All right? And I, and I just walk around like this. I'm trying to catch a drop. I'm just trying to catch a drop. A drop, a drop. Because that's the word of God. It comes by drop, 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 drop. I want to catch a drop. You want to catch a drop? <laughs> maybe you could be, I could catch a big drip this morning. <laughs> maybe, you're li- maybe you're listening to a big drip. So, I, so as the rain cometh down, the snow from heaven, and returneth not hither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and bud, right? So water comes down by drops, snow comes down by drops, and then, and then what happens? When it, when it hits the earth, it, it, the earth does something, right? Something happens to the earth, and it, and it, and it, and it, it brings forth and bud, right? So there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a taking in, and then there's a giving back. So the earth does what the earth is supposed to do, right? The earth is doing what it's supposed to do because it was fed what it was supposed to get in order for it to make whatever happened has to happen. And it says that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And verse 11. If I had a Bible, I'd highlight this. It says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. The words that come out of the mouth of God. The word we read this morning, it has a purpose. It has a purpose. Tell your neighbor it has a purpose. And then, and then it says, semicolon, that's right? And it says, it shall not return unto me void. And this is where, where I got the goosebumps. But it shall accomplish that which I please. And it shall prosper in the thing where to I sent it. See, because right there, right there in that, just that little moment, that, that means, let me just give you a word, predestination, okay? That means God planned for me to be standing here right now in this very moment. It's not a mistake that I'm standing here. It's not a mistake that you're sitting in a chair where you're sitting this morning. It's not a mistake that all of this stuff has gone on in your life that's gone on in your life to bring you to this moment. It's not a mistake that the word of God is being preached to you this morning Maybe like never before. It's not a mistake this morning because the word of God is going forth and all you have to do is catch a drop. Just catch a drop. One single drop and, and let it come in your life and, and it will produce something in your life that has never been produced ever before because this is what happened. God scraped dirt together, amen? And he, and he said, Adam, be a living soul. And I'm going to tell you this morning that you are a living soul, but you're made of dirt this morning. And the seed is the word of God, amen? Jesus the word was made flesh and dwells among us. His name is Jesus Christ this morning. We call him Jesus, but he's the word. And the word is, is Christ in me, amen? The word comes into my life, and it has to bear fruit, and something is going to happen. I'm going to find myself in exactly the right place where I'm supposed to be because God predestined. In other words, he has a plan, and there's a plan, and he's going to bring me to a place, amen? And I don't know what that place looks like. I don't know what the plan is, but I can know I can follow him one step at a time. I don't have to worry about anything else. I just got to follow him, amen? I got to follow what he's doing in my life. I got to understand that he's going to take me somewhere that I've never been. And it might look crazy, it might look stupid, but I'm going to tell you, he's so much smarter than me because his ways are not my ways and his thoughts are not my thoughts. And it's okay, amen? I'm not that smart. He's God. Woo! I wish I could get an amen because that means you agree with the word of God this morning. Amen. Amen. It will prosper in the thing whereto I send it. That means he sends his word. He sends his word. He sends his word this morning to you. <laughs> you, know, you know what? I, I, this is me. Okay, maybe this is not you. I, I, get so, I get so concerned because I don't understand the whole Bible. <laughs> I don't, I don't understand the whole Bible. I'm like, there's stuff in the Bible that I don't even know. Isn't it crazy? I'm just not that smart. Amen? But all I have to do is catch a drop. Just catch a drop. Just catch a drop this morning. It's enough. A drop is enough. 
You know, I pray this all the time. Uh, before I preach, I say, God, I'm just so stupid. I don't have a word to say. And, and a lot of times I say that too. I, I say, I don't have a word to say. I don't have anything to say because whatever I say isn't going to matter, God. I'm just so stupid. Just, just be God and, and just, just flow through me. Just, just let what's in me come out. You see, that's what, that's what has to happen. we got to set aside our selfishness this morning, our selfish desires to become whatever it is that you want to become or to go wherever it is you want to go or to do whatever it is you've been doing all these years. And you got to let God be God. That separates me from almost everybody else in all of the world because we all are selfish Help me. Help me, God. That, maybe we should just pray that. Help me, God. Help me to start a collection of drops. I want to start today. I want the word today. I want it today in my life. I want it today. I, I know when tomorrow gets here, I'll still want that in my life because I have experienced, I have experienced the word flowing through me. Amen? I will be done. Amen? Let me just wrap that up. Woo! I tell you what, the last three weeks, you guys are making me sweat. You know, I just want to finish well. Is it okay? I just want to finish well. I, I know that God has begun a good work in me. I just want to finish well. I like Jesus. Not my will, Lord, but yours be done. He, he gave us an example of what it looked like to die in faith. Amen? And that's what he asks of us today. Life for a life. Are you willing to give up your life? I can't answer that question for you, but are you willing to give up your life? I, I love this. We go down a few, a few more verses. Jesus looks at Peter and he says, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? You know, Jesus knows the thought and intent of the heart. And see, I don't, I don't really think that Jesus kept asking the same question because he already knew the answer. He, it was yes. He knew that, Je that Peter loved him. He, he really did. He knew. Even though Peter made mistakes and Peter went back fishing, he still knew. He knew. He knew. You know, if Jesus wouldn't have gone and got Peter uh, when he was fishing, Peter would have kept fishing. Peter would have never came back. Peter would never, uh, a couple chapters later, would have never preached a message that 3,000 people got saved on. He would have never preached a message the following day that 2,000 people were saved. He would have never gone on to walk and let his shadow f fall on someone and someone got healed. The, 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 ma the man at the gate, beautiful, would have never received. So he would have just kept shaking for gold and silver. But Peter, uh, he reached down and said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. He, that would have never happened had Jesus not gone looking for Peter when he was fishing, doing what he always had done. It would never happen. See, see, I, I think that Jesus was asking Peter, not, not so that Jesus would know, but, but so that Peter would know. So, so that he would say it out loud, what the secret was inside. That he would say, you know what, I love, G I love you, Jesus. So that everybody that was with him... <laughs> His, his entourage would say, would hear him say it. Peter, you know, you know, you know, I love you. I love you. I love you. And even in that moment, I found it really interesting that Peter's, Peter said, he had the audacity to say, yeah, I know, you know I love you, but what about this guy? You know, he wanted to blame somebody else and sh sh look at him, don't look at me. Because I think it was, it's hard for Peter even to understand that Jesus was looking at him knowing his past. And yet Jesus still said, do you love me? Do you love me? Jesus was preaching. <laughs> Jesus was preaching. No different than me preaching, okay? The word was being spoken. He, he, said, he said, do you love me? I wrote this down. It's 
so difficult for us to change our identity. It's so difficult. Only it's so difficult to change our identity. And what I mean, what I mean by that is, is whatever it is that you always do, you will, you'll keep doing it unless your identity changes. It's so difficult to change your identity. You know, a blind person cannot say, I see. A blind person cannot say, I see. See, that's the problem. I was once blind, but now I see. That's a revelation of truth and wisdom right there. I could just take an offering up and and walk away and pray right now. Because if you would just listen to that word, a blind person cannot say, I see. See, That's a good word right there. Because if I see, that means I'm not blind. That means I know the truth. (laughs) The name of your change is Jesus. That's the name. It's the name above every other name. So whatever it is, other name that you have, it's the name of Jesus. The name of our change is Jesus. Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? Question. And they said, No. They said, No. The whole world is seeking for provision this morning. I found it interesting in this story that Jesus already had fish cooking and he didn't go fishing. It's already cooking. So if, if you would understand this this morning, the provision that you need for your life is in Jesus. If we would just stop looking other places, it's already here. See, because if, if, he's, God, if, if he's God, right, I, 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 he, there's no lack in him. I talked about that last week. There is no lack in him. What, what, what is it that I lack? And why do I lack it? Because I'm not focused on my provision. I'm not recognizing it. I already have what you already need. <laughs> Jesus is the, he's the I am. He's the great I am. He's the, the provider, amen? He's our provider. Past present, future. He's, he's my past, God. He's my present, and he's my future. He's the author and the finisher. That means he brought me a mighty long way, and the story's not ended yet. <laughs> I'm still breathing. There's a, there's a verse that says, a living dog is better than a dead lion. Okay? And we, we can trust that this morning, okay? That I might, be, I might look like a dog, I might smell like a dog, I might, I might act like a dog, but I'm still breathing. Amen? And God is going to finish the work he started in my life, and I'm going to tell you right now that he will, it will be completed. Amen? It will be completed. Amen? What he started, he'll finish, because he wrote it down in some book somewhere. And I can trust him. Amen? I can trust him with my life. i gonna, I got to give him my life. Predestination means God has a plan. <laughs> he has a plan. And, in, and in, someone said this, and I, I didn't say this, but it's really good. He said, if it's God's plan, right, God will pay for his plan. <laughs> Think about that. What are you worried about? God's going to pay for whatever plan he's got in your life. You don't have to worry about it. Amen? He's going to pay for it. Amen. I'll be done. One more question for you. One more question. Not a big thought, just a question. (laughs) 
What are you overlooking? See, because overlooking means I'm standing somewhere looking over it instead of seeing it. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus has already got the provision in hand for your life. Amen? Come on. Come on. He's got it. Amen? Stop overlooking it. Amen? Let me pray. Stand with me and let me just pray. Take a deep breath. Punch your, punch your neighbor in the shoulder. Said, stop, stop overlooking what God has already given you. Amen? Stop overlooking. Amen? I know somebody just got hit in the face. <laughs> Lord, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would come and touch us, Lord. Touch the drops of word that have come into our heart, Lord. Bless the soil. It's already blessed. The soil's already blessed. The word is already blessed. The fruit is blessed, Lord. But help us, God, to receive in us the blessing that is going to come out of us, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you, Lord, that you are God, that your, your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my ways. And, 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 and Lord, you plan for me, God, and you plan for us, Lord, and, and, you, and you have provision for us, God. And you're here in this moment right now, God. And Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus that you would help us to have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to understand what it is that you see in us, God, that we don't see. Lord, that we can be that, that person in the world around us, God. Lord, call it out of us today. Call it out of us in Jesus' name, Lord. Call it out of us, Lord, that we can become, Lord, who we're supposed to be. Lord, I pray that a spirit of boldness would come upon this place. That it would come upon the ground, the fertile ground, Lord. And Lord, that it would begin to, we would begin to be bold about it, God. That we begin to understand it. And Lord, step out, Lord, without fear. Fear is just a prison. And I'm, I'm sick and tired of living in fear. I'm sick and tired of being in jail. You've already set me free and delivered me, God. Help me to have boldness to step out of that, God, so that I don't have to keep fishing all my day, all the days of my life. I want to be who you created me to be. I will not go back. I will stop stopping what you've started, Lord. And I will stop stopping what you have begun in me, Lord, and I will let you complete it. I am complete in you in Jesus. <laughs> That's the word. That's not me. That's the word. I am complete in him. And Lord, I pray right now, even as I spoke that, I felt the presence of God come. I, I really did. I felt, I don't know who that's for, but I, I, I pray that, that, that you would seal it right now, God, with your spirit, God. Fertilize it, Lord, with your spirit. And Lord, help us, God, to step into it. Help us to take one step today, one step today, Lord, towards you, Lord. And I just thank you, for Father, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Can we just give him some praise? Let's give him some praise. God is good this morning. God is worthy this morning. Amen. I'm so excited. If, if you need prayer, uh, Joanne and I will be up here. Maybe, maybe Paula will come up and help us pray uh, a little bit today. If you need prayer, we'd love to pray with you. Don't just run away if you don't have to. If you have to, that's okay. I understand. And we just look forward to what God is doing. And we're very excited about, uh, uh, about our website. I, I want to tell you something, too, before you go running away. Our website, we have a new uh, prayer wall up there. And so if you need prayer anytime, you go there, you click on the little on our on our website, uh, mybreakthrough.online. If you go on, if you have a computer, <laughs> and you just click, you just click. If you don't have a computer, you you just call Edwin. She'll she'll get the she got the number of Joanne. But if you don't have if you have a computer and you wanna you wanna click the prayer button, okay, and 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 write your prayer 
and that prayer is going to get instantly emailed out to some prayer warriors in the church, some people that are prayer, pray, praying people, okay? And, and, you, and somebody's going to start praying for you, okay? And we want to stay connected with you uh, all, all during the week, not just on Sundays, but all during the week. And uh, we love you, my wife and I, we love you guys. And we are so excited about what God is doing, amen? And so, so just, just go out and be blessed, amen? Amen? I'll stop talking now. I feel like I want to keep preaching. I don't know. <laughs> is, it, is it okay? Huh? You can do it on your phone too. Mobile. Your mobile device will work. On, you can, uh, if you're out somewhere and you know, hey, I got a coworker that just got had an accident or something. You just push the button, and uh, and you can put the prayer right in like that. And sometimes on your on your mobile, you can actually push the little thing and just speak, and it'll talk right into there and send it right off. And uh, so we're really excited about that. And uh, you know, we're we're just God is really moving. Amen. Amen. I'm excited about what He's doing. In Jesus' name. Amen.